Welcome to Take 5. Here is your host, Dr. Driver. Welcome to Take 5. I'm your host, Dr. Driver. Today I was uh, thinking about why every Christian I know seems to come under attack. And I thought, do they not have the Holy Ghost? Do they have a force field around them? Do they have the hedge of protection around them? And the Bible is clear that we do, but the Lord does allow, listen to me, this is important, the Lord does allow uh, trials and testings and uh, circumstances that are beyond our control to affect us. And you wonder why. I know it's a testing of our faith. I do know that. It does help us to pass those tests. But sometimes the things that happen to us, those attacks, can really be like deliberate. So I was reading Job chapter 1. And in Job chapter 1, Job was a rich man. He was the richest man in the area. He's from the land of Uz. That's U-Z. <laughs> U-Z, Uz, not Oz. <laughs> of Uz. And he was the richest man in the area. And the story goes like this. See, Job has children and he has, you know, sons and, and three daughters and, and they're partying and they're celebrating because they work for daddy. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, but Job was a man who would always make sacrifices uh, later that day uh, just in case, you know, God, you know, if they sin, God will forgive them. That's a righteous man. So Job was a very righteous man. He had a lot of animals. He had a lot of servants. Just read the story. I'm just kind of giving you a narrative to make sense of this. Because even in my own personal life, I do a lot of things. But there's a lot of times where I go, wow, I'm really being attacked. But then I say, Lord, thank you for those attacks. we got to give God the glory no matter what we're going through. So Job makes sacrifices every morning on behalf of his children. But Satan is the accuser of the saints. Now, if you could say that with me, even though you're, you're watching me on YouTube or uh, GTV or, or on any podcast channels, just listen to me and watch me and say the same thing. Satan is the accuser of the saints. So I want to read a section of Job chapter 1. And we start in verse 6. It says, One day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and, now watch this, and the accuser, <laughs> the accuser, Satan, came with them. Now, friends, wasn't Satan kicked out of heaven? Just look at Isaiah. Yes, he was, but he still has access. Because remember, Satan roams the earth. He's Lord of the earth because of the sin in the garden, Adam and Eve. So he could come up into heaven and, and say to God, hey, 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 John, Susan, Mary, <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> Tommy, everybody down there, they're doing the following. But watch what God does. This is really cool. I love how God operates with all this. He says, Where have you come from? The Lord asks Satan. Satan answers, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asks Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man complete with integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Now, before I read what Satan's response is, let me just tell you, God sees you, God knows what's going on in your life, God observes everything. Nothing can be hidden from God, amen? Nothing can be hidden from God. But Satan patrols the earth as well because he's Lord of the earth. Gospels say that, the Old Testament says that. Why? Satan was kicked out of heaven because he also had rebellion or the true insurrection there in heaven. So my friends, we have to look at why we're always under spiritual attack. And if you're a man of integrity, a woman of integrity, Satan is going to attack you as the Lord permits it. Now, the Lord's always testing. Just look at David. Just look at Moses. Look at everyone in the Bible. The Lord loves to test to see if we are people of integrity. Abraham was a great test. I just love the story of Abraham. You know, God promised him he's going to be, you know, the founder, the, <laughs> the patriarch of the Jewish nation. And he was. And that his covenant promise will come through his son Isaac. I get it. That's great stuff. But he too was tested. Sacrifice your only son that I promised you, Abraham. Abraham did what he was told. Friends, 
We're going to be tested. We want to pass those tests. But Satan's going to always throw some things at you as well. Sometimes he doesn't even go up to heaven and ask God permission. But at the same time, he does go up there and he does make false accusations. But praise be to God. Our mediator between God and man is Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews. And I'm just praising the Lord that I could say, Lord God of heaven, thank you for sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for Calvary and conquered death hell in the grave, and Satan's under my foot, according to Luke 10, verse 19. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, when I look at this story, I, I get really excited because I know, no matter what I go through, God is sovereign, God is merciful, and God will not let me be tested beyond what I can handle. Amen? So here's what um, Satan, <laughs> and what God was talking to Satan about. So back to verse 6 again. It says that the members of the heavenly court came and they presented themselves before the Lord and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Wow. See, even Satan has to fall in, in order. He has to follow the, um, I guess, the hierarchical uh, importance and, and he, can, he can't just roam and do whatever he wants, even when he flies up into heaven. Okay, this is something to think about. And God says, where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. So Satan sees what's going on. He sees what things are going on. I don't think Satan's going to go up to heaven to ask God for permission to strike someone that's not a believer. <laughs> I just don't see that happening. Because the word says he only attacks those, that's why it's called the accuser, of the saints. Amen? So then he says, the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? <laughs> he is the finest man in all the earth. He's blameless, a man of complete integrity. Are you a person of integrity? Do you say and do? <laughs> you know, whatever you say you do, if you are, that's a person of integrity. Especially doing what you're supposed to do when nobody's watching you. You're a person of integrity. Following the word of God, of course. The Lord asked Satan, verse 8, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest of all, of the, all the earth. Okay. Satan replies in verse 9, Yes, but Job has a good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. <laughs> so Satan is aware. I only got a few minutes. Satan is aware of what God is doing in your life. And he can't just, listen, this is really good. He can't just attack you without permission from God because you are a child of God. So he's going to lie about you. He's going to go up to heaven and say, well, Susan did this, or Mary did that, or, or Johnny did this. And the Lord's like, no. And then Satan goes, okay, but I bet you if I do this to him or her, he'll denounce you, or he'll sin, or he'll do this. And the Lord will say, Satan... No. Or I'll allow you to do this because God knows what we're going to do. Listen to me. God knows what our responses are going to be. He says, yeah, go ahead and strike his property. Just read the story of Job chapter 1. The Lord says, go ahead and strike his property. The Lord allowed it. Satan passed, oh, not Satan passed the test, but Job passed the test. Satan goes back up to heaven and says to God, well, you know, skin for skin. He said, okay. The Lord goes, okay, Satan. You can strike his skin, his flesh, but don't kill him. So Satan goes and strikes Job with boils and with a skin disease and so on. And yet, Job did not sin. He was, he was close to sinning because his friends, self-righteousness and their way of approaching Job, tried to say, well, you must have sinned. So in closing, what I learned, this is what I learned, this is important. When you are walking by faith to please God, just know, just like Job, God will allow testing to come, and he sometimes uses Satan to attack you. But the Lord will protect you. He holds you in his hand, and nobody can pull you out. Amen. So I want you to be a comfort. Trust me when I tell you, read the story. And you will be encouraged to know that if you hold on to your righteous integrity of who God is and what Jesus was sent to the earth to die on the cross for our sins for, we know 
that no weapon, no weapon formed against me will ever prosper in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God before me, who could be against me? We are the children of God, and Satan knows that. And therefore, if we just say to Satan, get behind me, Satan, you have no authority over me, Satan, whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever I loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So Satan, be gone in the name of Jesus. But no that God will sometimes allow Satan to destroy maybe your family, your property, or inflict you with disease. He, that's a test. But pass the test by counting it all joy, according to James chapter 1. In your sickness, count it all joy. In your loss, count it all joy. And keep serving the Lord. And He will restore you as he did Job seven times over if you stay in faith and maintain your integrity. You have the power over Satan because you are the child of God and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all your sins. Amen. So may God bless you. I pray for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. Pass the test that the Lord brings upon you. Keep fighting the good fight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and you will succeed. Join me again on another episode.